Hey everyone, I hope you all had a good holiday. Um, I finally have some time to work on this uh, 5SFE project. So I'm going to go over a few things here. Um, and then I will do the building process for the short block on this and go over some things on that. And um, we'll end the video with a few things I'm going to be doing in the next video. Um, so basically, let's just go over this real quick. So this is the block I've spec'd out. Um, this is the one I pulled the crank out of. And the journal is kind of darkened up a little bit. Uh, and there's definitely some bearing damage and the rod is actually out of round now so uh, this crank is going to need some work done uh, at the machine shop so I've actually got a, another crankshaft from a Camry uh, it's got provisions for the balancer gear so I've got this crankshaft and then the rods along with it so I'm just going to switch all this stuff out um, this crank we'll use in a future video this will be the next step to the 5SFE project if, if it makes it this far. Um, I'm going to turn the journals down on the rods so that way I can put eagle rods on it. Uh, if the 5S doesn't make it to that point, then I'll save it for a 3S stroker project. Uh, either way, I'm going to save this guy right here for a later, later time. Um, and it will be determined later on what I use it exactly for. So keep that over there. Um, everything's been spec'd out, so I got a couple sheets I go through whenever I spec out a block. Uh, I use this for documentation. Basically, uh, once, once I pull the motor apart from the race season or a couple race seasons, I'll be able to pull this documents, these, these measurements out and kind of compare it to the measurements I take after the motor's been pulled out and tore down just to see what kind of wear I've gotten over the the race season or years or whatever it would be but this this lets me know what's what's happening to the motor um, just to keep an eye on things that could potentially be wearing out um, all the pistons the rings bearings everything's been spec'd out so we're we're ready for assembly um, so let's get it to it get this short block assembled and then we'll go over a few things for this next video all right, so let's get this engine off of the workbench here. Let's get it installed on the engine stand. Uh, once it's on the stand, we'll take all the main caps off and then we'll get the crankshaft installed, uh, get the caps corked down, and then we'll work our way to doing the rods. So let's get this thing on the stand so that way we can start working on it and get this project going.
we got the short block, uh, the crankshaft assembled into the short block, so uh, it's uh, partially rotating assembly now. Uh, we lubricated the bearings up uh, during assembly. I use this engine assembly loop from uh, Stay Lube. Uh, it's got Molly graphite in it. It's a CRC product. Uh, that's what I use when I, when I assemble these. There's also the red goopy stuff. I don't really mess with that too much. It gets messy and stringy and stuff, so I don't really mess with that. So that's what I use uh, during assembly for the bearings. I'll use the same thing for the rods and then uh, ARP Ultra Torque. Uh, OEM spec is just to use engine oil. I've got the Ultra Torque for you know, my ARP bolts for the heads and mains for other projects. So I just use this all the time. It seems like it's good stuff, so I just use it. Uh, so, all right. Um, so the crank's ready to go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna get all the pistons hooked up to the rods, uh, and then we're going to position the rings onto the pistons properly, and then we're gonna pop these guys in here, and we'll be done with this part of the build. Our short block will be pretty much a rotating assembly, will be pretty much done and then we can move on to the other parts like the oil pump and some other items. So uh, let's get going on this, get this stuff assembled and uh, be back in a minute. All right, before I start the assembly of this, uh, the rod onto the piston, I'm gonna show this to you real quick. Um, when you take these things apart, just pay attention to it. There's a little dot casted into the piston. Uh, this indicates this faces forward, which is cylinder number one. Um, then the rods have the same thing. These little notches here are going to face forward. The other side doesn't have anything. It's these little, little indentations show forward. So this needs to go together like this. Um, and then the main caps also have like a little arrow on it. So um, you always want the arrows to paint to face towards the front, which is always cylinder number one for the 3S and 5S stuff. So, uh, just wanted to show that real quick. I'm going to start the assembly of everything here, and we'll get into the motor.
All right, everyone. Short block's done for today. Uh, we got pistons in, rods, crank, uh, all the measurements and specs done. So this short block is assembled. Uh, there's obviously a few more things we'll do in a later video, like the oil pump and checking some things out on that, um, and oil pan pickup. And then our our short block will be fully assembled. Um, but that'll be it for this video today. Um, our next video is going to be uh, a comparison for the 3S and 5S stuff. Uh, I've CC'd each one of these pistons in this engine, uh, I've measured a dish of it. I'm going to use that measurement and a few others to calculate my total compression ratio, but that'll be something we get to later on. Um, but the next video will be comparing these to uh, a standard size piston versus um, some 3S stuff. So we're going to do some comparisons on rigidity and uh, CC volume and a few other things. So keep an eye out for that video. I should have that out pretty soon. It's a pretty easy, straightforward process. Um, but I wanted to get it out there, how to do it, and then some information on the 5S versus 3S stuff. Uh, I think it should be cool. It should be interesting. Definitely learn a few things. So keep an eye out for that video. Uh, one last thing I'm going to do and see if you guys like this is I'm just going to go over everything I used in this video um, and kind of give you guys some information on what I use to assemble this short block. So this is all stuff I bought on my own. Um, this is These are things I found that I use in the shop and just going to share it with you guys. Um, the assembly loop I kind of pointed out before. This is the CRC stuff. Um, I don't know if there's really a part number on here, but you should be able to get it from any local place. I really like this stuff uh, versus uh, this stuff that's on the shelf that I don't ever really ever use. But this works too. Uh, I found this is really kind of makes a mess. It's kind of sticky and it, it kind of strings out everywhere. So you start getting this stringy stuff all over your parts and paperwork. So I, I, I try to avoid using this stuff. Um, Sometimes I still use it in the head just for the, you know, the consistency of it. It kind of works, but generally I just use this stuff. Uh, like I pointed out before, ARP uh, Ultra Torque. I use this on the OEM stuff as well as my uh, normal ARP hardware I install normally for, for uh, some of these motors. Uh, torque wrench. So I just got a snap-on digital one. Any torque wrench works. Uh, even the stuff from Harbor Freight isn't too bad, but it's a five to 100 foot-pound uh, torque wrench, 3 8 And then I used, I can't get it off, but it's a 12 millimeter 12-point um, socket. So that's what I use for the rods. And also this is used in the head bolts, the factory ones, we'll get to that later though. And I also used a 14 millimeter socket for uh, the mains and the specs on those were the mains were uh, 43 foot pounds and the rods were 18 foot pounds plus 90 degrees uh, this digital one actually shows degrees as you turn it that's why I uh, saw me use it after torquing it um, then piston ring stuff these are your traditional piston ring pliers uh, they get the job done, but they're kind of, uh, they kind of spread it out weird. So it, it's literally just like spreading it like this. These I got off Amazon. What it is, uh, is it's got the little, little things like the other one has, but it also holds it out here. So that way it actually kind of like holds and supports it. That way you don't stress out the, the ring too much while you're trying to install it. These work really, really good. My only complaint is the grips get kind of slippery when you get when you get oil on your hands from assembly, but it gets a job done. Uh, this is my piston installer, piston ring compressor. So this one's actually a blue point, but it's got a three and three eighths to three and five eighths uh, piston ring compressor on it. Uh, this is a cool, very cool tool. Uh, it's a ratcheting one and it's got different inserts for different pistons. Uh, this is awesome, I use it all the time. Uh, the generic one from AutoZone or Harbor Freight where it's got like an Allen key and you twist it, that works great too. 
that's just this is the one I use uh, and then my piston hammer this is literally what it's called I got it off Amazon too but it's really great for uh, pounding pistons into the bores uh, nice and swiftly but this is what I use uh, rather than the butt side of the hammer that works too but I got this uh, it wasn't too expensive but it is uh, a mountain brand don't know if, what you know how good that is but it's held up for me um, that's kind of like a general overlook of the tools I used uh, if you guys like this I'll start doing this in more videos if you think it's beneficial for you um, so let me know what you think and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video where I measure the pistons and uh, see what, uh, what we find out. See you all next time.